What is going on guys? Welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video with a commentary this time. So this is my second ever KSP commentary video. Uh, the first one I did was on a Minmus SSTO mission, which seemed to be quite well received by people, so I thought, let's try another one. So this is my Grand Tour mission. If you haven't seen the official video of this, then there's going to be a link on screen now. You can click that and it will open in a new window. But that video is only about 2 minutes 30 seconds long, so if you have um, YouTube ADHD like me, then maybe that might be more to your tastes. Otherwise, maybe you're a bit more interested in the specifics of that mission maybe, then this video will be for you. So I'm going to be covering sort of the, the craft design and the actual mission design and all of that. So I'm going to try and keep it below 20 minutes, but we'll have to just cross that bridge when we get there, I think. So yeah, we're just sort of time accelerating now to our first destination, the Mun. Or Moon, or Moon. I don't really know how you're supposed to pronounce it. But there's going to be a lot of cutting around in this video because the mission was so long and you can only time accelerate so much in the game. So most of what you're going to see now is sort of sped up by 12 times in post production. So we are just touching down on the moon. And yep, you can see the secret weapon of this craft, the drills, which were added in KSP 1.0. And it basically allows you to mine for fuel up any planet and moon. So you can build ships that can sustain themselves and allow us missions like this to be possible. Ordinarily a ship of this size would not be able to do what it's going to do in this video, so yeah, there we go, we're just taking off from the moon, and the next stop is going to be Minmus, but uh, it won't be the only time we go to Minmus, as Minmus is very good for mining for fuel when you're low, because it requires very, very, very little Delta V to land on. Uh, another good place to mine for is on Gilly and Pole, because they don't have very high gravity either. Uh, you'll notice on this craft there's actually a claw on the bottom because I brought I brought that basically with the intention of being able to mine asteroids around Dres and things but in the end I realised I didn't really need it because you can get all the fuel you need from Dres itself because its gravity isn't really high and like I said Paul, Gilly, Minmus. Uh, in this video I didn't really mine from Gilly that much just because my route didn't really take me past the EVE system very much but you might find on your missions that you end up going past Gilly a lot and then it will be quite a good place to mine for fuel. Uh, now a lot of people say that you need sort of scanning equipment and all those big heavy satellites to properly mine for fuel and whilst that's kind of true you don't need to. Uh, the only difference would be is that if you landed somewhere with lots of resources your ore tank would fill up pretty much instantly after you start drilling um, otherwise it would take a few days but you can just time warp through it anyway so it takes like a second of real time no matter what. So yeah don't worry about bringing scanning equipment with you because it's just so heavy and it doesn't really it's not really worth it. So here we are just approaching Duna, so um, I was worried that um, I wouldn't be able to survive re-entry but as it turns out Duna's atmosphere is so thin you don't really have any problems with overheating. I actually checked my difficulty settings to make sure re-entry heat was turned on because I didn't even get any kind of temperature gauges showing up or anything but I think that just goes to show how thin Duna's atmosphere is. But here we are just a parachute landing with the aid of some engines to do the final bit of slowing down and then we can start mining again. And uh, yeah, this is why you have to make sure you bring an engineer because people like Jebediah Kerman, they're pilots, so they can't repack the parachute. So make sure you bring an engineer. <laughs> uh, here we are, just unpacking the, uh, unpacking, repacking the parachute. And uh, there's going to be a little outtake in a minute that wasn't actually in the final video, but I thought it was quite funny, so I thought I'd show it. So yeah, all you can see me now is just jumping down, just jumping down, and rolling over, and yeah, here we go. Mm wasn't a great moment really but this is the power of quick save. Speaking of quick save, if you want to do a mission like this, a lot of people know about F9 and F5, but a lot not many people know about Alt F5 and Alt F9 and they are much more powerful because it basically lets you have an unlimited amount of different quick saves. So I sometimes like to quick save as I'm entering the orbit then a, dif then a different quick save when I'm lining up my periapsis and all that. Just in case you mess up one of your moves, you can quick load a little bit further back than you would normally if that makes sense, but it's very useful if you decide to take a different route, like if you wanted to go from Jewel to Eve and then realise that was a bad idea but you quick saved in Eve's sphere of influence, you can quick load further back, maybe at Jewel. I hope that made sense. But uh, yeah, here we are coming up to Ike. Ike, 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 Ike. And yeah, you'll see me pumping fuel manually a lot in this mission because I forgot to add fuel lines, so you might see the fuel levels changing a bit in the ship, that's just because I'm pumping fuel from that big central tank because whilst I have engines on that tank, I mainly just use the outer four engines. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the engines. So there are four LV909s, or Terriers, powering the craft. I think if I did this again, I would definitely incorporate some sort of nuclear engine, just because you really do need them for the big long burns, because they just have such a high ISP. 
I think the LV909 on the top of my head has an ISP of about 350. Uh, the Poodle is a little bit better, but the nuclear engine has an ISP of about 800, which is amazing, and it's really, really good, especially for places like Elu and Moho, where you're going to have to do really long sustained burns. Uh, you really do need a nuclear engine, so I think if I redid this ship, I would definitely incorporate some sort of nuclear engine. Uh, let's talk about revising the ship a bit more. So, I wouldn't bring a claw next time. Uh, I brought the claw, obviously, to mine Dresteroids and things, and asteroids around Kerbin, maybe, if that ever happened, but... It was mainly for Dres, but in the end, you don't need to. Just Minmus, Gilly, Pol, uh, and they're fine for getting fuel. You don't really need to worry about asteroids. Uh, as well as this, you might notice there's those four little heat shields. You also really need to have a heat shield covering the whole thing so you can aero break at Jewel, because throughout this whole mission, there's some cool outtakes coming up later, but uh, throughout this whole mission, I was unable to aero break anywhere really, and that was a real major pain because it meant I it meant I wasted a lot of Delta V and time doing this whole mission without being able to aero break. So definitely bring a heat shield next time. I was actually thinking about doing a modular design so you can maybe leave big heavy mining equipment in orbit whilst you go to the harder places like Tylo and Lathe, which require a bit more Delta V to lift off from. Maybe being, being able to sort of dump all the really heavy stuff in orbit is a really useful thing to be able to do. So yeah, here we are just leaving the Drez system now and uh, yeah, we're coming up to Jewel. And this is what I mean about aero braking in a minute. I tried to aero brake so many times and it just would never work if just touching Jules atmosphere the very edge of it would cause me to explode and even the air braking at Lathe whilst I could sort of sort of get into the atmosphere it wouldn't work so here we are just lining up my um, encounter with Jules now and in a minute I'll just show you some uh, aero brake attempts but yeah this is basically why I cut out most of the maneuver nose because it takes so long but yeah here we go air brake one no again no no no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 Ah, ah, oh, oh, no. So in the end, I just sort of gave up and decided to burn the manual way without aero braking and then sort of skim through the very top of Lathe's atmosphere. I realised if you just sort of stayed above about 44,000 metres, you could get away with it, but... In the end, most of the braking was done with engines, but thankfully I had a full tank of ore so I could convert it into more fuel as I went. And I had full tanks of fuel anyway, pretty much, so I had enough Delta V to get there. But uh, yeah, here we are stopping at the greatest petrol station in the world, or gas station for you Americans. What am I talking about? Uh, pole, it has really low gravity, so it's really good for getting easy fuel. Uh, one thing you need to be careful of, Pole has a lot of invisible terrain, so definitely always quick save before you land on Pole, because sometimes you'll just explode in mid-air because of the invisible mountains that haunt this place, but it doesn't have to be on this occasion, so here we go, just slowing down, and touchdown. And this is probably the most fun part of the whole mission, I think, the Jewel system, because personally I'd never been to Jewel before. Well, I'd visited Jewel itself and dropped a sort of a little bomb into the atmosphere with lots of science equipment just to do some very quick scanning. I don't know if that would work anymore to be honest, this was back in 0.25 maybe. Uh, certainly now I think it would just explode on probably touching the atmosphere. But yeah, here we are, lining up for our first destination. So we'd already gone to visited Lathe because we aero braked in the atmosphere. Pol is done, the next one is Tylo. I was hoping I'd have enough Delta V to land but I quickly realised that uh, I wouldn't. The basic rule of thumb is if you can make a lander that can get off Tylo, you can get off everywhere except Eve and I guess Kerbin as well, but uh, a Tylo lander can take off from anywhere. Although I think recently with the aerodynamic changes, Lathe actually requires more Delta V to get off, but don't quote me on that. In fact, don't quote me on anything I say in this video because I really don't have any idea what I'm doing most of the time in KSP, so a lot of the information you hear from me might be wrong or incorrect, misguided at best. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here we are just circling Tylo and our next stop is Val. I was quite surprised by Val actually, I'd never really heard much about it, but it was actually a really nice place to go. It's definitely the coolest place in the Jewel system, I think, after maybe maybe Lathe, but I don't know, I quite like visiting Val, so here we are just getting our encounter now and slowing down. But yeah, what have I talked about with this craft that I needed to highlight, I think? Uh, Alt F9, yep, heat shield, we got that. Power, that was what, that was what I was going to talk about. A lot of people say you need fuel cells for mining and things because it uses a lot of power. And I'd say if you've got batteries and solar panels like this one here, then you're going to be fine. I had about 800 units of electricity stored in batteries. And with solar panels, that was fine. Unfortunately, it meant you could only sort of mine and convert ore into fuel during the day. But it ended up not really being a problem. 
Uh, it was a bit of a pain on Elu because solar panels work really, really slowly at Elu because it's so far away from the sun, but at the end of the day, with time acceleration, it was never an issue, so don't worry about power. Um, like I said, don't worry about fuel, uh, fuel? Don't worry about claw, scanning equipment, it's not an issue. I think just definitely go with a nuclear setup, maybe go with a modular setup like I highlighted earlier where you can dump heavy stuff in orbit for the hard planets. And uh, yeah, definitely bring a heat shield. I'm definitely going to do a follow-up of this video with an improved craft and try and land on everywhere. Maybe not EVE, that will probably need a dedicated lander. I'd love to see some someone come up with a mining ship that can get off EVE, but I don't think it's really possible. I don't know, it might be, who am I to say? But uh, yeah, whilst we're watching this video, there's not really a lot I can talk about really because I'm sure you all know how encounters work. Here we are coming up to BOP. I might say this video is going to be spoiler free with easter eggs in case people don't want to know what easter eggs are so they want to find them themselves. So I won't say anything more than that but uh, don't worry about seeing easter eggs in this game. Well, in this video. Uh, yeah, let's go over some uh, FAQs that I got on my videos a lot because I don't really have anything else to talk about at the moment, so let's see. Uh, what mods do I use? Well, I might just face this by saying that every single component you'll see in my videos is stock. I won't use any modded components, and if I ever do, I will definitely mention it. Um, either by white text in my music videos, or I would just say it in a commentary. But for the most part, every, well, so far all my videos have just had stock parts in them. As for other mods, in this video I'm using Kerbal Engineer, that's what gives you all that apoapsis and periapsis readout and all that. And uh, I'm also using Kerbal Alarm Clock because it's really good for getting transfer windows. You can just tell it to, it will just calculate transfer windows for you and it's, it's so it's a lot, it should be stock. It should definitely be stock. As, as should um, Kerbal Engineer Redux really, everyone needs to have that mod. Uh, but yeah, here we are coming up to Elu. I'd never been to Elu before, so this is quite cool. Uh, it kind of looks like a dirty snowball, but um, yeah, here we go. It doesn't really have much gravity either, so you can circularize with basically no delta V. Um, we're just burning for a landing now. It took quite a lot of fuel to get here because it's just so far out, but once you're there, it's not an issue. And obviously, you can just mine from there, so that was all good. But yeah, you'll see, I don't know if you'll be able to see in this video, but how slowly the solar panels work, but... No, I think I cut it out. But there we go, just planting the flag. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I was doing there. Uh, let's continue. Sometimes, oh, this really frustrates me actually with Google+, Plus because it's awful. Um, I get a lot of really nice comments and questions from people, and I can't reply to them. <laughs> There's no reply button. So I try and write comments and put their name. There's a guy that comments on all my videos. Oh, let's just open one now. What's his name? Nikolai Peterson. You, and I'm sure some other people as well, but he's the one I can think of. He has like a Steve Buscemi, I don't know. I'm getting sidetracked. Thank you for your comments. I'm sorry I can never apply to you. Um, other questions to get asked. Um, doing a Duner SSTO. I've actually made a Duner SSTO. I've just never got around to making a video of it because I think I'm just kind of bored of SSTOs now because I've done them so much. But um, Oh, here we are. To, uh, just video quickly with going back to the video. You can see I'm basically landing on fumes here. I was really running out of fuel coming back from Elu. I was really panicking I wouldn't make it, but... I did it in the end, and I was able to mine some sweet, sweet fuel from Bop. But you can see how little fuel I've got left in those tanks. This isn't the only time I've had to land on fumes. Uh, I have to do it one more time later. But yeah. Have I thought about doing tutorials? I have thought about doing tutorials. I've actually filmed some segments for a SSTO video because I realised that not many people have made SSTOs um, easily in this version of KSP. And um, I've made some pretty good ones, actually. I've made some that get to Minmus and the Mun. Uh, and land on them and then be able to return so I was thinking about doing it but I think more and more people are starting to get better at them now so I'm not sure how relevant those sort of videos would be anymore yeah here we are stopping up pole I know we got fuel from bot but oh there you go just there <laughs> that was an example of invisible terrain at pole so definitely be wary of that good thing I quick saved but yeah whilst I got some fuel from pot uh bop it's definitely I just decided to go to pole anyway and get some more fuel there because it takes a lot a lot less delta V to get away from pole than it does from bop and I thought for the next burn because I have to get all the way to Moho, I'll need as much fuel as I can get so uh, yeah touching down at pole I did it successfully this time so there we go it's useful having those center engines there just to give you some extra speed if you mess up your suicide burn like I do so there we go uh, equipment what equipment do I use in fact just quickly I'm going to talk about this we can see on the screen now it shows you a bunch of dress 
it's Delta V. I was trying to get to Drez to slow myself down, but it took 3,313 meters per second to slow myself down. And you can see me trying there, but I just ran out of fuel. So what I decided to do in the end was to go via Kerbin. I think it's because when you're coming down from Jewel, you're so high up from the sun that as you fall towards the sun, you build up so much speed and momentum that you just can't slow yourself down very well. So here I am doing a sort of error break at Kerbin, but not really because you can't error break in this game anymore without a heat shield, so I was basically circularizing on engines. And the original plan was to refuel at the Mun because that's where I could get an encounter, but I didn't have enough fuel to land there, so I had to sort of mess around getting avoiding that Mun capture and trying to get a encounter with Minmus, which I did in the end and managed to refuel again, pretty much landing on fumes, which was a good thing. And then yeah, let's just see me landing on Minmus there. This is the last time I think I ever visit Minmus in this mission, so enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sure you're pretty much bored of Minmus missions by now. Uh, let's continue. So another question I get asked a lot is which song? What song is in your video? The song is always either, as of recently, it's always been on screen, but um, it will always, always, always be in the description of my videos. Sometimes there might even be a link to purchase it on iTunes if the song I'm using requires that to be in the link, um, the description. I know Approaching Nirvana request that that be in the description of videos that use their songs. But here we are, we're just getting a uh, Eve assist to Moho. You pretty much need to do an Eve assist to get to Moho. The way it works is that you get an encounter with Eve, but make it so you go past the planet and your Eve escape points backwards along its trajectory around the sun and that will slow you down a lot. And that's how you do it. Obviously we're going way too fast to get a landing at Moho. I tried, I set him in a maneuver node and realized it was just way too expensive in terms of Delta V to land there. So a fly, a flyby had to do. I got some science from it though, so that was all good. Great camera work there, as always. <laughs> um, I go, I've never been asked this, but I suspect I will be because I'm not American. Is uh, what accent do you have? Uh, I'm British, for those of you uh, who wouldn't be able to figure that part out. But I'm originally from Leicester, so I guess there'll be a hint of the Leicester accent. Uh, the Leicester accent sounds a bit more chavvy than my voice, more like Leicester, Leicester, that kind of. I think, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here we are encountering uh, Gilly, just moving swiftly away from that topic, just getting encountered with Gilly, using up almost all my fuel now to get there. That's how much, that's how expensive Moho is to get away from, so Moho really is the limiting factor for your ship if you're going to attempt this. So yeah, if I'm redesigning, I'll definitely need to try, uh, try and come up with something that can get land on Moho in return. I guess once you've landed, you'll be alright because you'll just be able to mine and get what you fuel back, but it takes a lot of Delta V initially to do that. And there we go, just touching down now on Gilly, this will be the last spot we go to. And you can see gives Gilly's gravity and I'm sort of bounce around trying to get the drills to anchor me in place because I'm not even really landed there, the legs are just floating there. But we managed to get enough fuel to land, we've got a full tank of ore as well so I can do lots of messing around trying to get a good landing at the KSC. Uh, just circularizing around Gilly, doesn't really take much, you can see I'm throttling on barely any power to get off the surface. So yeah, just getting my final encounter with Kerbin now. I'm sorry there was a lot of uh, sort of interplanetary stuff cut out from this video. If you want to know about interplanetary tutorials, Scott Manley is definitely the guy to go to or the an equivalent. I don't really know anyone else that does tutorials. But so uh, yeah, just circularizing. My goal initially was to get a landing at the KSC, but uh, I couldn't manage it and I couldn't really be bothered to try again so this is as good as you're gonna get so I undershot slightly but uh, you can kind of see it on the right there I'm just touching down on the mountains I was really worried I was gonna fall over actually because I'm coming down on a hard slope but luckily Kerbin's gravity is so heavy that it just kind of crushed the suspension of the legs and ended up keeping me pretty much straight and there we are almost just over 94 years later Chuck Kerman finally lands at Kerbin and comes comes home. <laughs> well that could have been a better way to end the commentary couldn't it? But I hope you enjoyed listening to my voice and enjoyed the mission. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for a mission let me know in the comments. I'm gonna try and do this again but land in a... try and land everywhere maybe except Eve or bring a dedicated Eve lander so I can get that done as well but uh, yeah hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment below I do read all the comments and reply to all the ones I can do with Google Plus. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, I'm going to put a link on screen at the end again to the music version of this video, but otherwise I hope you enjoyed again. Okay, but bye!